no go sell the swagger That thing don't come overnight It don't come overnight, yeah Hey, mini father, she, je, je I am back sharing more incredible good of all ideas with you. I thought it would be a great idea to give you guys lots of options. As we are entering into the winter season, you guys know I'm all about seasonal eating and also because holiday festive season is in full swing. So I wanted to give you guys some ideas that you can take to your family, your friends, share and spread the love and joy of cooking. With that in mind, I have created three magical Buddha bowls. I'm gonna be sharing a butter bean mash, which is just a must this holiday season. I'm gonna be sharing this North African inspired quinoa dish which has roasted hazelnuts, roasted carrots, Jerusalem artichokes are back in season. And when I tell you this vegetable, I feel like it's so underrated. For more recipes and inspiration, be sure to head over to my website to check out my eBooks. I actually have a holiday inspired eBook. It's called Festive Wonders. There's a sweet potato pie with candy pecans. Recipes like ackee oyster mushroom and leek patties, which I will for sure be making this holiday season. Flamed roasted chimichurri glaze, cabbage wedges. Yeah, there are some really incredible ideas in the Festive Wonders eBook. All of the ideas that you're about to see are fully plant-based. If you're like me and you eat a little bit of meat, fish or some eggs, feel free to add, mix and match, do as you please. Make sure you work these bowls, put your own creative flair on them, put your own touch. Be sure to tag me over on my Instagram at Tish Wonders if you recreate any of the ideas that you are about to see. Let me know which bowl you will be trying out first or which idea you'll be trying out first in the comments. I am ready to get into these bowls. I'm done talking. Let's go with the food. Let's get into it. Buddha bowl idea number one. I'm ready. Let's go. The first bit of all idea is a creamy butter bean mash, which is, oh my goodness, it's heavenly. Zesty roasted Brussels sprouts and sweet potato and a lemon garlic tahini dressing. So we're gonna start off by preparing this super delicious butter bean mash. I love to cook my beans from dried. I love to soak them for a good amount of time. So these were butter beans that I soaked overnight and then I washed and rinsed them. I placed them into my pressure cooker with some sea salt. Because we're making a butter bean mash, I actually want the butter beans to be as soft as possible, so I'm actually gonna slightly overcook them. So we are going to infuse the butter bean mash with the most wonderful flavors. We're gonna be using some garlic, some fresh rosemary and some fresh sage and some leek. So we're gonna kind of fry them up, get them crispy and tasty. So I began by finely chopping the garlic and then finely, finely chopping the sage and the rosemary. I then chopped up the leek and this is all the ingredients ready to cook down. So I grabbed my pan, I heated a little bit of oil in the pan and I threw in the leeks, the sage, the rosemary and the fresh garlic. I seasoned with some sea salt and a good grind of black pepper and I cooked down until those flavours were like booming in my kitchen and everything was smelling delicious. So go ahead and place your cooked butter beans into a pot or a bowl. So I grabbed a really good olive oil. This is the one that I'm using at the moment, which is just, ah, oh, so good. And then I swirled in a little bit of olive oil. I began mashing up the butter beans and then I placed in those leeks and those garlics with the fresh herbs and some more black pepper because you can never have too much black pepper, in my opinion. You will be so surprised at how delicious this is. If you haven't tried butter bean mash, then yeah, you must. You have to try it. To prepare the zesty roasted Brussels sprouts, I began by removing the outer layer and chopping them in half. I then placed them on an oven dish, swirling over a little bit of olive oil, some sea salt, some black pepper. Then I continued by grating on a little bit of lemon zest. I love the subtlety of the lemon zest. It just works really, really well. It gives it a nice citrusy flavor, but not too intense, which I love. So for the sweet potato, I simply just chopped them into disc-like shapes, added a pinch of sea salt, a little bit of oil just to get them nice and crispy. Once they are looking amazing, once they are looking like this, you will not be able to resist, but try to. Let's plate the plate first. Try to, Tish. <laughs> you know I love a good tahini dressing just to swirl over everything, bring everything together. Place a little bit of light tahini into a bowl. I threw in a little bit of minced garlic, added some lemon juice, some sea salt, some black pepper, very, very simple. I thinned it out with a little bit of water. I think it's always good just to do it by eye. So to finish the bowl off, I simply steamed a little bit of kale. So onto my bowl, I placed on the steamed kale, that piping hot butter bean mash, which was just smelling so, so yum. I scattered over those crispy, zesty lemon Brussels sprouts, those sweet potato discs, which I added a little bit of sesame seeds to actually, because I just wanted to. And then I swirled over that tahini dressing. I was even more generous once I had finished filming, once I had shown you guys this bowl. This feels so festive to me, especially with that creamy butter bean mash. I love how it's infused with the garlic and the leeks. It just works so beautiful. 
beautifully. And those zesty roasted Brussels sprouts, oh my goodness, you have to try them. So this Buddha bowl is a roasted Rasal Hanout carrot hazelnut, quinoa, yogurt beetroot dip, and roasted broccoli. This quinoa recipe, honestly, I feel like it's one of the best ways I've ever prepared quinoa, and I've had a lot of quinoa in my lifetime. It is delicious. So Rasal Hanout is a North African spice blend. I feel like it has so much depth. It has so many layers. There are so many warm tones to it, and I don't know why, but it just pairs so well with carrots. So to prepare this divine quinoa dish, we are going to take our carrots and we're going to peel them if we need to. We're then going to chop them into like sideway wedges. That's how I describe these types of pieces. So place your chopped carrots into a bowl, or you can place them straight on the baking sheet. It's totally up to you. And then place on the Rasal Hanout seasoning. This was a ready blended seasoning that I bought from my local supermarket. So yeah, in went the spice blend, some olive oil and some sea salt. So I also love throwing in whole garlic cloves. I don't like to chop the garlic cloves because I don't want them to burn. So if you throw them in whole, they'll get really caramelized, almost crispy. So place your coated Rasal Hanout carrot pieces onto a flat baking tray and then place them into an oven of about 200 degrees. Leave them in there for about 20 to 25 minutes. As you can see, like I said, the garlic cloves have cooked down. They're like crispy, caramelized, just so yum. So continuing on with this dish, I grabbed my soaked quinoa. I soak absolutely everything. So I washed and rinsed my quinoa, placing it into a saucepan, and I actually cooked it down with some stock. This is just preference for this dish, but you can definitely cook it with water. I just cooked it with a little bit of vegetable stock. So I grabbed my blanched hazelnuts and I placed them on an oven dish, and I placed them into a preheated oven of about 180 degrees Celsius. I left them in in there for about 10 minutes but yeah cook them until they have a beautiful tone to them like this and then roughly chop them up so to assemble this dish we are going to place our cooked fluffy quinoa into a mixing bowl followed on by our roasted rasa hanout carrots some flat leaf parsley which will be finely chopped our roasted hazelnuts you can go and swirl in a little bit more olive oil if you want to. Place in a squeeze of lemon juice, a crack of black pepper, and give everything a good, good mix. So this quinoa dish is an example of something that I would just have ready in my fridge to pair with different things throughout my week. It is so delicious. All the spices just blend so well together. So we're gonna make a beetroot dip. It's basically a hummus, but it's not because it doesn't have tahini. Instead of the tahini, we're gonna use some coconut yogurt. The beetroot dip calls for some grated beetroot. We're gonna need some fresh dill and a lemon, some coconut yogurt or yogurt of your choice, some garlic and some chickpeas. So place all of your ingredients into a high-speed blender or a blender. Just a um, thing about the beetroot. So raw beetroot might not sit well with everybody's body type. So if you want to heat it gently before you put it into the blender, you can do that. You might find that this just works better for your digestion. So blitz the dip, <laughs> blitz the dip, blitz the dip until it is smooth and it reaches this type of color, which is just, oh, Always blows my mind, this fuchsia pink, I love it. I scattered over some dill. Lastly, I prepared some chili roasted broccoli, which is really simple. I kind of chopped the broccoli into small florets and then I swelled over a little bit of oil and I placed on some chili flakes and some cumin seeds, some sea salt, and I placed it on a flat baking tray into an oven of about 190 degrees and I left it in there for about 15 minutes until the broccoli was looking like this. Yum, yum, yum. So time to plate this vibrant, flavorful, flavor-packed bowl. So I grabbed my bowl. I actually placed it on a little bit of rocket, which is arugula in the States, because you guys always ask me what rocket is. I then placed on that Rasal Hanout quinoa, followed on by that incredible beetroot dip. I then placed on that chili roasted broccoli, and I placed a little bit of cherry tomatoes and red onions. I'm not gonna stop talking about that quinoa recipe because it is, it is literally mind blowing. I love the roasted hazelnuts with those roasted carrots and the Rasal Hanout spice blend. Oh my goodness, so, so yum. Although it's similar to hummus, that beetroot dip just has its own flow. And that chili roasted broccoli is just simplicity at its finest. 
So many elements that I love about this bowl. So for the final Buddha bowl, we are making spiced coconut lentils and rice, Berbera cabbage, roasted Jerusalem artichokes, steamed squash and parsley tahini. We have got a lot, a lot in this bowl. So we're gonna begin by making our spiced coconut lentils and rice. We're gonna use spices like cumin seeds, mustard seeds, cardamom pods. We're gonna use cinnamon sticks, bay leaf. We are gonna make it so, so tasty. So I put my brown lentils to soak the night before. This ensures that it cooks at the same rate as the rice. So I love a little bit of basmati every now and then. So we're gonna be using some basmati rice, making sure that we wash the rice thoroughly before we use it. But very gently heating a pan, I added a little bit of coconut oil, placing in the cumin, the mustard, and the cardamom seeds. So I literally cook the spice seeds for like 30 seconds or something. They will cook really, really quick and you do not wanna burn them. So I placed in the basmati rice, some water, some coconut milk, a really, good pinch of sea salt, a cinnamon stick, a bay leaf, and then I placed in the soaked brown lentils. So I covered the rice and lentils, cooking it down for about 15 to 20 minutes. So there is nothing like cooking with real spice seeds. It just is the best thing ever. You're gonna smell how fragrant this smells in your kitchen. So these are Jerusalem artichokes. This is the vegetable that I will not stop talking about. I am going to be raving about it all season because they are so incredibly delicious. So you're gonna give your Jerusalem artichokes a really good scrub and then you're gonna chop them up. You can chop them any way you feel to. This is how I like to chop my Jerusalem artichokes. So I placed them on a flat baking tray. I gave them some sea salt, some black pepper. I placed on top some fresh herbs. I had some fresh rosemary and some thyme. Sage would work beautifully with this as well. So I drizzled over a little bit of olive oil and honestly, I just took a moment to admire them because I know in moments, these Jerusalem artichokes are gonna transform. They're gonna turn into something something just, ah, oh, something amazing. So yeah, I put them into a preheated oven of about 200 degrees and I left them in there for about 25 minutes. You wanna leave them in there until they are looking crispy, caramelized, golden, just like this. Time to prepare our parsley tahini, which is packed with pine nuts. We've got lemon juice, we've got fresh garlic, we've got tons and tons of parsley. So yeah, let's do this. So I began by grabbing my pan and gently heating it and I toasted these pine nuts. So into my high speed blender, I placed in some fresh parsley, some minced garlic, some sea salt, some lemon juice, a swirl of olive oil, a drizzle of light tahini, some black pepper, and the toasted pine nuts. So I blitzed everything until smooth, just adding a touch more of olive oil just to help everything kind of process in the blender. I made a batch big enough to kind of store in my fridge, so I'll definitely be using this dressing throughout my week. So we're gonna move on and prepare the Burbre cabbage. Burbre is a Ethiopian spice blend packed with spices like cardamom, nutmeg, ginger, and smoked paprika. I finally chopped up my cabbage, giving it a good wash and rinse. Heated up a little coconut oil in a pan and I placed in the cabbage, followed on by some chopped red onion, some chopped garlic, the Berbere seasoning and some sea salt. And I just cooked everything down. Sauteed cabbage alone is delicious, but add Berbere seasoning, yeah, you got a winner there. So we are gonna simply steam this red curry squash. So I just chopped it in half, I scooped out the seeds and then I chopped it into wedges. So I placed it to steam until it was soft. So plating up this bowl, I grabbed the spiced coconut and lentil rice placed on that incredible Berbere cabbage, followed on by the steamed squash, those mind-blowing Jerusalem artichokes, and I swirled on top that parsley tahini. So, so incredible. So no surprise when I say I will be making a big, huge tray of those Jerusalem artichokes this festive season. Match that with a little Berbere cabbage. Yes, perfect combination. So three winter-inspired Buddha bowl ideas for you guys to take away. I hope this video has fueled lots of inspiration to jump into your kitchen. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please give the video a like, subscribe to my channel if you're not subscribed already, and I will see you in my next video. See you all, bye.